I'm Julie Banderas for FoxNews.com. More than a decade ago, a scandal dubbed Rathergate rocked CBS News. It was during the 2004 presidential campaign when the longtime news anchor presented a 60 Minutes piece based on documents alleging George W. Bush shirked his duties while serving with the Texas National Guard. But it turns out Rather and his team didn't do their homework. Experts almost instantly called the documents forgeries. Following a CBS internal investigation, the network apologized and fired four execs and producers who worked on the story. Rather himself was soon gone. Fast forward to today. A new movie based on a book by one of those fired, former producer Mary Mapes, is out with a new version of the story. The movie's ironic title, Truth. Here's a clip. Hey, Mary, these blogs are saying that the memos can be recreated in Microsoft Word. Several experts have raised serious questions. They're going to start an investigation. This is bad. They do not get to do this. They do not get to smack us just for asking the question. CBS has banned promos for the film, citing there's little truth in truth. But many media critics are applauding it, including the New York Times. Joining me now is Scott Johnson, one of the journalists from the blog Powerline, who broke the story of the so-called Killian documents, which broke open the scandal. Thank you very much, Scott, for talking to us about this. And first, I want to ask you to refresh our memories of how you and the folks at Powerline discovered the fallacies in the Killian documents that led to Rathergate. Julie, that was a great introduction. It was more informative than uh, just about any of the articles and reviews that have been written about the film. Uh, I started writing about the 60 Minutes segment that became Rathergate on the morning of September 9th, 2004, before I went to work the morning after the segment had been broadcast. And um, just wrote briefly about it, uh, described what they had reported, looked at the documents that they had posted, that CBS had posted online, together with uh, the story and noted that the documents were unusual. Uh, if you were familiar with President Bush, the documents reflecting President Bush's service in the Texas Air National Guard. And before I, I posted, I, I called the post the 61st minute before I published it on our site on Powerline. I uh, looked at our email. We had gotten an email that forwarded a comment from Free Republic by a commenter named uh, Harry McDougald, who, who, as we subsequently learned, um, under the name Buckhead, uh, that said that the documents uh, were not typewritten, that they were obviously created uh, in Microsoft Word, word processing, and that they were not typewritten as they purported to be in 72 or 73, but obviously uh, sometime wow. subsequently on a word processor. Right. I raised the question by, by quoting that email at 7.50 a.m. Central Time before I went to work on the morning of September 9. By the time I got to work that morning, we were inundated with emails with information of all kinds, suggesting not just the fraudulence of the documents, but the fraudulence of the story from beginning to end. And as I continued to update that post the 61st minute on the morning of September 9, the thing just exploded until wow. the Drudge Report linked to us about one that afternoon. Scott, Truth is based on Mary Mapes's memoir, Truth and Duty. So right there, the movie is only portraying one side of the story. Now, Kate Blanchett portrays her as a martyr and as a victim in this whole episode. So will this bias in Hollywood continue to go unchecked, you think? You know, that's really the question. And um, truth and duty has become truth. And in a kind of Orwellian inversion, truth is lies. Uh, her book isn't just one side of the story. The story with both sides is told incredibly well in the in the Thornburg report, the internal investigation that you referred to, mm -hmm. about 250 pages long with several appendices. It's available online for anyone to look at, and it shows that Mary Mapes is a talkative liar and that that story that CBS broadcast was false and fraudulent from beginning to end. So the truth is out there somewhere. Unfortunately, it's just not in the movie called Truth. I would imagine the producers of the film would have contacted you or consulted someone involved, uh, you know, in, in actually leaking this information and actually doing the research. Was anyone, I guess, trying to contact you? They did not uh, try to contact us. And, uh, you know, when you're saying that, I would say when I first read about the film, it's unbelievable to me, you know, that, that a film uh, with you know Robert Redford and, and Kate Blanchett has been made out of this very bad 
book, but we volunteered to play ourselves uh, for free in the film huh. on, at our site. And uh, we always fantasized over the years. You know, it was really my, my power line partner, John Hinderocker, and I, who were kind of the, the uh, Woodward and Bernstein of the story, were the ones who helped facilitate discovery of the fraud that CBS had committed. Um, I always fantasized that Robert Redford would play John and <laughs> Dustin Hoffman would play me, but no such luck. <laughs> you know, the New York Times recently held a panel discussion with Dan Rather, Mary Mapes, and the cast of the film. Uh, why do you think the Times is promoting this film? That is a great question. Uh, the Times seems to be have some perverse uh, link to this story. The story was broadcast on September 8th. It took 12 days for CBS uh, to, to render what turns out to be, from Dan Rather anyway, a false apology for the story that they had broadcast. Right. On September 15th, in the middle of this, the New York Times published a story uh, kind of sticking up for them that this, you know, with this classic headline that the story that CBS had broadcast was fake but accurate. That's the New York Times. They seem to have some perverse stake in the story. I think it's the old Bush hatred. Uh, right. It seems to be endlessly recyclable for those who believe in recycling. You just mentioned Dan Rather's apology, his fake apology. Well, he has implied that his apology was actually forced by CBS News and that he acted, quote, within right. the normal range of journalistic bungle. First of all, he, you know, is rather whitewashing history and our major media outlets like the New York Times supporting him. And does he actually want all of us to believe that he had no idea that these documents were falsified? Well, Julie, he actually still sticks up for the authenticity of the documents. It's unbelievable. He, has, he himself has written his own Rathergate memoir called Rather Outspoken that was published in 2012. He not only retracts his on-air apology, he stands by the story from beginning to end. He stands by the authenticity of the documents. And it's really, it's really a farce. Uh, it, it, it is a Hollywood special to rewrite history, but uh, Dan Rather sticking with the story. Do you know if there was ever proof, really, that pinned him to actually having seen and known and had knowledge, credible knowledge, that he, in fact, did know that these documents were forged? If you read the Thornburg report, you have great sympathy for Dan, rather. He was taken for a ride by Mary Mapes. He still trusts her. They obviously had a relationship of trust that's depicted in this movie. I think it may be one of the true things about the movie mm -hmm. uh, that's portrayed in the movie. I don't think he had any idea. He showed up and read a script that had been written for him by Mary Mapes. If you read the Thornburg report, there is a... Uh, it is obvious she had reason to know that the documents were not what they purported to be. Mm. Well, then That's what else? all I can say. You know, what, what, else? What, what, what her intention and, and what she would say the state of her knowledge was is one thing, but she obviously had reason to know that the documents were not authentic. There was never anything that brought them within a country mile right. of Colonel Killian, the, the purported author of the documents, or his family, or a personal file, or anything else. What else? If she think? believed they were authentic, she was a fool. Yeah, I mean... She is a neighbor, a fool. She was an experienced producer, a veteran producer, and should have known better. Right. Uh, what else should people who might see or read about the film know about what really happened? The thing I would really like people to know is that the story is out there and that it is, as I said, in, in the Thornburg report uh, that is a tremendous piece of work that is still accessible online. If you go to this story, the, the, the 60 minute story, it's still available online. The documents are still available online, but it, it comes with a preface that says an independent panel has found that CBS did not conform to journalistic standards in preparing this story. And that independent panel is the Thornburg panel. The report that they prepared is the Thornburg report. And anyone who takes a look at that will have, uh, I would say, no doubt, and certainly prove beyond a reasonable doubt, that that story that CBS broadcast was fraudulent and false from beginning to end, not just the documents, but also the assertion that President Bush uh, needed help to be admitted to uh, for training as a, as a fighter interceptor pilot in the Texas Air National Guard in 1968. Well, Scott Johnson, we want to thank you very much for coming here. I know this isn't Hollywood and this isn't a film set and you did do this unpaid, so we appreciate it nonetheless. 
Thanks for having me, Julie. And for more of Scott's writing, visit powerblog, powerlineblog.com. For foxnews.com, I'm Julie Banderas.